With the Star Rail anniversary here, I feel like it's a pretty good time to more fairly compare these two games that have no right being compared, but everyone insists on doing so anyway. Now, can you advocate for and request changes in Genshin Impact that have been represented in Honkai Star Rail despite being asked for in Genshin for quite a while? Absolutely, and I think that is a good thing. My own issue with a lot of these comparisons just comes from the extreme bias against Genshin. So what I hope to accomplish here is taking a very objective look at different features that are present in both the games. Some of them are a little unfair, but I'll talk about it anyway, and I'm not going to talk about anything that is purely subjective. Very important things such as the story, the character design, or even the most basic of things like the fact that one is a turn-based game and the other is an open world exploration. Those are purely subjective things, and everyone is going to have their own opinion of them while there are far more objective things to look at. So let's kick the needless comparisons off with one of the most important things in a gacha game, the monetization. Given that they're both ran by the exact same company, it's no surprise that they are almost identical in how much things like Top Ops, Battle Pass, and Welcome Moon cost. But as far as the Canadian PC version goes, Honkai Star Rail is marginally cheaper in the top up and the battle pass department, but oddly like 20 cents more expensive for the Welkin Moon, or as I call it, Space Welkin. So that kind of gives the advantage to Honkai Star Rail, but I guess if you're kind of a player who only buys the Welkin Moon, uh, the advantage will go to Genshin, but in general, I'd say Honkai has the edge here. Now for banners. Now the obvious thing here is that Genshin weapon banners are absolutely awful. Honkai Star Rails are way better. Their limited character banners are basically the exact same. Same, but Honkai Star Rails has the small edge or downside, depending on whether you look at it this way, of having the standard characters like Don Hung, March 7th, basically the equivalent of like Kaya and Amber and Lisa, being able to be obtained on limited banners and actually have rate up bonuses. Some might see it as a negative thing, and I understand why, but I generally view it as a positive thing for the overall player base. Then there's the 300 standard wishes in Honkai Star Rail guaranteeing you a standard 5 star of your choice. And that is after the beginner banner in Honkai Star Rail also guaranteeing you a 5 star just not one of your choice, but at least you're going to get one to make it a little bit less appealing to re-roll a bunch of times. And even with the Chronicle Wish that we just got in Genshin, I really don't think that in even its best iteration, whatever that may be, or what it could be, is going to tip the scales in Genshin's favor. Star Rail wins this one pretty damn easily. Now for the Battle Pass. With Star Rail recently switching to giving you tiers instead of individual trace materials, I really want to give the edge to Honkai Star Rail on that one alone. However, that's not the only benefit that Honkai Star Rails has. It also continues past level 50 which is something I've wanted in Genshin for a very long time. Now, the rewards may not be substantial, but I've always said that it should just be something, anything. Just go past and give us a little bit, and that is exactly what Star Rails does. Now, I'll say the difference between these two battle passes is really not substantial. It is definitely not enough to be like, oh my god, one is way better than the other, but one is better. Not only is it just better reward-wise, but Star Rails is also a little bit easier to complete. But I will say, neither of these are difficult to complete by any means, but one of them is still easier, and that is Star Rail. So overall, Star Rail takes this category as well. And last Lastly, for monetization, the anniversary. Now, okay, the anniversary is not technically a monetized thing, but given that the biggest reward for both of these games is the top up refreshing, I feel like this is a pretty accurate over like umbrella category to put this in. And look, we all know Genshin's is way better. Off, oh, <laughs> kidding. Star Rails is better, but honestly, not by a lot. Like, I was really looking forward to the Honkai Star Rail anniversary because I just wanted, I wanted either like Star Rail to give absolutely nothing worse than Genshin's, which is still technically possible and just watch the world burn that way or I wanted to be them overwhelmingly generous and watch the world either way I just I wanted to watch a fire instead it hit me with one of the most unexpected things which is like pretty much just very close to Genshin's but a little bit better now the biased people are gonna be like oh it's way better than Genshin's it's really not it is better not by like an overwhelming amount but I, what is it like 30 wishes from star rails and some other stuff versus like 10 or 20 from Genshin's and like a little pet neither of them are anything spectacular in my opinion the real big reward Award is for those who pay for it. The top up refreshes, those are huge. Those are a huge dollar value for the people who are going to buy those bundles anyway. Look at only to justify it. We all know Honkai Star Rails is better, so they're taking this one as well. On to the next big category, which is of course another gacha standard, which is resin or space resin or stamina, whatever the hell you want to call it. I'm gonna just call it resin because we all know it is that, which will also be the first thing we'll be comparing, which is resin to trailblaze power. Resin recharges once every eight minutes and can hold up to 21.33 hours worth. Trailblaze power, on the other hand, recharges every six minutes, up to 24 hours worth. However, when it comes to ways to bank it, Genshin has condensed resin, which allows you to condense up to 200 resin and basically save it for almost any activity you want. Star Rail, on the other hand, only lets you condense for simulated universe planar relics. And the reserve system is really bad. You don't want to use it, but in the case of an emergency where you maybe can't log on for a few days, at least you're getting something out of it, whereas condensed resin, you need to actually log on and do something. This one is 
is a little bit subjective. I'm gonna call this one a tie because it's gonna depend on what kind of player you are. For me, I play every single day and condensed resin is way better than the other systems Star Rail offers. And being able to hold 24 hours worth versus 21, it doesn't matter to me. Now let's talk resin costs. Or specifically why I'm not gonna talk about resin costs because I could just do a bunch of math and bore you to death, but really it is, it is difficult to compare. Genshin has crowns. Star Rail has an equivalent that is much easier to get so there's less of a question of when to use them and you're pretty much always gonna max things. Star Rail has more traces than Genshin has talents and on average a character levels more traces than they do in Star Rail. Then there's the fact that Genshin has passives which can give you more talent books or possibly refund talent books. So let's just move on to the next one which is amount of available resources. This one is the first blowout in Genshin's favor. In Genshin you can farm elite for experience, mora, artifact experience. You can mine ore for weapon exp. And possibly most importantly the thousands of chests in the open world are going to give you a lot of resources. I know from my own personal experience that I own less characters in Honkai Star Rail's one year anniversary than I did in Genshin's, yet I am far more star for most resources than I ever was in Genshin, because Genshin just allows you to go above and beyond in so many ways. Most players won't do many of the activities I said in Genshin's favor, but the fact that they are there as an option is a big advantage over Star Rail, which only allows you to kill mobs in the open world, which gives a very little amount of experience, very little credits, and no chance at relics like it does in Genshin. And that's going to take us right into the next major category, which is just general gameplay. Starting off with basically what I was just talking about, which is optional content, stuff for you to go above and beyond and just kill some extra time. As an open world game, Genshin has a massive advantage here, and Star Rail just doesn't really give you the option to do much. You can go around and kill mobs in the world, but the reward for that is very minimal. If you're looking to play for a couple hours beyond just doing like your dailies and spending your resin, Genshin is a far better game for this. There are so many things you could be doing, whether it be mining, killing elites for more experience and some artifacts, or farming artifact EXP. There are a ton of activities you could do that are productive. In Star Rail, killing enemies in the overworld just isn't that rewarding, especially when the game really wants you to max your characters out. The EXP part of those enemies is mostly going to waste unless you're just padding your party with lower level characters. So again, Genshin wins this one easily. Dailies. Yeah, I've talked about it before. Star Rail's dailies are way, way better than Genshin's. They've been better since day one and they only keep getting better and better. All you need to do is grab a friend's character or a stranger's as a support, spend the resin you woke up with, and you have completed your Honkai Star Rail dailies. Not only that, but you can turn them in from anywhere on like Genshin where you gotta go to a Catherine. I don't even really need to talk about Genshin's because we all know it's not too great. It's not difficult either, like five minutes and you're pretty much done. And even the encounter points in the best of scenarios is still going to be slower and less efficient than Star Rail. Next up, Domains, aka okay, the thing you spend your resin on. Now, I'd say the only factor that really matters here is how much time it takes to do them, and in that case, Genshin's are way quicker. The main difference is, with Genshin, you actually need to do them. In Star Rail, whether you like the auto battle system or not, it is there. So if you just want to do it and then go get ready for work or something, you can have it spend your resin for you. And if you want to do it the good old fashioned way, well, you can do that too. So Star Rail really gets the edge here. Not to mention if you want to do calyxes versus ley lines, calyxes are way easier than traveling all over a small region to get three ley lines that you want or however many you want to run. Open world slash overworld. Obviously, terribly unfair comparison. Genshin is an open world game. Honkai Star Rail is more of a traditional on Rails JRPG. Regardless, they do both have worlds to explore where you solve puzzles, do some things, get chests, and then you can explore a kind of completed or lesser version of the world that you would originally explore, which is fine. Both games do it relatively well, especially considering Honkai Star Rail wasn't made for that, but you can do it regardless. In any case, Genshin's better at doing this for obvious reasons. Puzzles. Both games have puzzles, and this is completely subjective, so I'm not going to say one is definitively better than the other. That being said, I have a preference. I like Honkai Star Rail's puzzles more. I find them to be a little bit more creative and I enjoy them, even though both are easy. Events. Okay, this one is a little bit messy. Star Rail events last a very long time. Often they last from the day they go live until the end of the patch cycle, which is just fantastic. However, their main events, the ones that give the self-modeling resin, tend to be very, very long. And depending on your viewpoint on that, that could be a negative or a positive. So I'm just not really gonna consider that one, but I don't like how long they are. 
Star Rail, on the other hand, gives you the option to go back and play old major events, which is so absolutely gigantic that I'm giving them this category based off that alone, even though I do think that Genshin events in general are actually better. And I really only think that because of events like Theater Mechanicus or especially Wind Trace. Like the co op events so far in Genshin have been really pretty damn good. World bosses, meaning the ones that you use for ascending characters. Honkai Star Rail has this so easily. Not only do they not have a stupid respawn time like Genshin's, they also don't have random drop rates. You get an exact number you can predict, and that part is great. Weekly bosses. On Genshin's side, you can do as many weekly bosses as you want, with three of them having a discount. This is really good for the new player experience who joined into the game late and has a lot of different characters to build, especially for paying players who get a lot of characters at once. Star Rail, on the other hand, lets us do three bosses of any kind, could be the same boss three times or three different bosses once. This system is not only really good for when a brand new boss comes out and you get to do it three times, but it's also just really good for anyone who wants to really focus on one character. I do think there is a little bit of nuance to it for various types of players, but overall, I will give Star Rail the edge. Endgame. Basically, Spiral Abyss versus Memory of Chaos, Pure Fiction, and Simulated Universe. Pretty much, By the fact that I had to say three things for Star Rail, obviously Star Rail has the edge, but I gotta admit that I am incredibly biased that I've been doing only Spiral Abyss for three years, and that is a lot. Not only that, but Pure Fiction and Memory of Chaos have gotten the treatment of allowing you to skip the earlier floors that are just considered way too easy for your skill level. God, I, I really just wish Spiral Abyss had that. Assignments and Expeditions. Just on the fact that Star Rail Expeditions, or assignments, can be turned in from anywhere just like the dailies can, makes me want to give it the edge just for that. In terms of rewards, they're both pretty damn similar. Genshin gives you a little bit more control, but the resources are ultimately less valuable the longer you play. For sheer diversity and convenience, I give the edge of Star Rail. Now let's talk about artifacts and relics. Many really dislike Star Rail's system of having no off-piece. While this does make building the character a little bit more annoying and restrictive, the real penalty comes from the fact that when you're farming a Cavern of Corrosion and you find a piece that has a really good stat on it but just doesn't make sense for the set bonus, it just sucks. On the other hand though, when you actually get defense or HP on a DPS piece in Star Rail, while it does suck and it is not what you wanted, at least defensive stats matter a hell of a lot more than they do in Star Rail. You don't control what the enemies attack and you can't just dodge. In Genshin, there is absolutely no value of those stats on a DPS. You could try to make the same arguments, but you can just dodge. You always have the option to dodge. More importantly, you can just encase yourself in a shield with Zhongli, and none of that matters anyway. I think this one is really just personal preference. Both have their pros and cons, and you really just gotta decide which one you prefer more. Now, Strongbox and Relic Synthesis, on the other hand, I think there's a little bit more here to talk about. Strongbox in Genshin has always been a very misunderstood or undervalued feature. It doesn't help that it's always lagging a little bit behind on what artifacts you can actually get out of it. That really hurts the public perception of it. That being said, now that we have high value sets like Emblem in there, I think people are more happy with it. Throwing 30 junk artifacts in there and getting 10 new ones is a pretty good deal if you ask me, especially when you factor in the fact that you can get off pieces. Compare that to Star Rail's rate of junking 10 artifacts to make one of your choice of a certain type, well that is also pretty valuable too. It really depends on whether you're going for quantity over quality. Regardless of your own preferences in the moment, the main benefit of Star Rail's system, that being the choice, whether it be through self-modeling resin or the relic remains, is only made so so essential and important because of the fact that you don't get an off piece in Star Rail. I believe that if you were a relatively casual player and you, you're, all your characters are, they're decently built but could all be improved with relative ease, the Strongbox system is going to get you much more bang for your buck, where the Star Rail system is a lot better at targeting a very specific character and trying to make them better through one piece, but it's a lot more expensive. And for that, I give the edge to Genshin in this case. Now for some miscellaneous stuff, let's start with social features and co-op. Obviously, Genshin has co co-op and Star Rail doesn't, so Genshin takes this category easily, even if Genshin's co-op is really just kind of eh. It's not great, we all know it, but at least you can pal around the open world with your friends, do some domains together, and even some events like wind traits and stuff come along, and that gives you something to do. New player experience, a very important thing for games as they get older, and gacha games are notoriously bad for this. I will say that Genshin's has been getting a lot better, and they've really been putting a lot of effort into trying to make newer parts of the game more accessible to newer players. However, I believe that Honkai Star Rail has built themselves with a far better foundation for this. Their beginner banners are far more friendly and leave players with a better starting experience. Older events are made available to players at all times, albeit with reduced rewards, but still at least it's something they can experience the story and characters. And obviously being an open world game versus a non-open world, the non-open world is a lot faster to explore and is much less daunting from a new player point of view. Then there's the support system. While it may not help you do anything like MOC or pure fiction that is a lot more important, at least it allows you to 
test out characters and also help you with some of the early progression. Clearly, Star Rail has a lot going for it in this department, and I think it wins this category quite easily. Side activities. Now, Genshin is an older game, so of course it's going to have a little bit more in this case, but if we're comparing one-year-old Genshin to one-year-old Star Rail, Genshin at that point had the Serena teapot. Meanwhile, Honkai Star Rail as nothing. Even if we're generous and we count the older events that you can replay as side activities, I still think the Serena Teapot is a better feature than those if we're taking the rewards out of the picture. But even so, Serena Teapot has rewards too, weekly rewards that keep coming back. And of course, Genshin also has TCG. Now I'll admit that comparing a three-year-old game to a one-year-old game, not exactly a fair comparison, but also Honkai Star Rail has had all of Genshin's lifespan to learn from it. As we know through many of Star Rail's features, they clearly looked at feedback that Genshin had and said, hey, Hey, we should do that because people want it. But regardless, Genshin is winning in this category right now. There are, of course, all kinds of things that just don't really have one-to-one -one comparisons in the other game. In Star Rail, for example, we have the synthesis system, which allows us to trade back and forth between boss drops, trace materials, albeit at reduced rates, but it gives us value for items that we maybe have extras of, where Genshin just doesn't really have that. Then in Genshin, you have characters like Kazuo and Yalan that give you so much extra value than just their combat power. They can make exploring the overworld so much easier. They can cheese puzzles. And I think that has its own value and Star Rail just doesn't have a comparison. When you roll for a character in Star Rail, all they are is what they are in combat. The main takeaway from all this is just that <laughs> these are different games. Maybe stop treating it like they're the exact same thing competing in the same space. They are made by the same company. That is where the comparisons end. I understand that when Star Rail gets features that Genshin players have been requesting for years and like we still don't have in Genshin, that is frustrating. It upsets us all. Both of these games are really good and I understand that a lot of people, they're a little bit disenchanted enchanted with Genshin these days. Maybe they burnt out on it. That's fine. Enjoy Star Rail. I enjoy them both. I'm even going to add Zenless Zone Zero to the roster whenever that releases. So, I mean, like, there's... Hoyaverse keeps making great games, and quite frankly, I, I wish they wouldn't, because gacha games are not really my thing, but they're getting better. And it's unfortunate. But in any case, thank you to you for watching. Thank you to my members and patrons for supporting me, as always. And I'll see you in the next one. Attaboy! Ah!